Howdy. So I have a ME 9.7 here. I believe it's this one. Uh, customer says that it's a no start. Uh, it says that it has camshaft and exhaust codes. And they say it smells burnt. And I have to agree, I can smell a very strong burning smell. So 100% there is a burning of the PCB. It's, you know, very distinct smell. So yes, I can smell that as well. And I think that they sent this second one as a donor to clone this one if I'm not able to repair it. I'm not 100% sure I'm checking with the customer now, but I think that's what's going to happen. So first, we're going to open this guy up. And um, we're going to investigate what that burn smell is. So uh, bear with me while I open this up. These, these guys can be a pain sometimes to open. And we have to remove these little prongs here. But uh, just give me one second, and I will magically have this open. All right, so got it open here. The burning smell is extremely strong. And, uh, well, I've got it halfway open. I haven't taken it completely out yet. Right now, I can see around this capacitor some pretty uh, weird happenings. So I, I think that's probably where our smell is coming from. Let me show you real quick. So you can kind of see what I see. So I see this really weird uh, brown liquid. So that's going to be the electrolytic from the capacitor leaked out. And we can see under there the discoloration from the FR4. And it looks like it kind of blew out too. So we know that this cap is bad. And now we just got to determine how bad this damage is. So I'm going to have to take the board completely out because knowing these units, the back side is probably worse than this side because um, what happens is this electrolytic fluid, it leaks through all the, the through holes and the vias. So I'm, I'm expecting some more damage on the other side. So let me finish taking it out and we will see what's going on completely. Then we're going to get this guy removed and hopefully we can clean it up and replace it. And then what I might do is I might uh, I might just read, you know, a backup from it, and then I might send this one back to the customer, let him test it, and if there's any funkiness still going on with it, then I will clone his replacement. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this out and go from there. All right, very gentle, going around it here, and we just have the connector part still hanging. So let me just kind of give it a little persuasion here. And there we go. And just like I said, I think the majority of the damage is on this side here, so... Let's see what it looks like under the scope here for you guys. And there we go. So, really won't know real good till we start cleaning it up. Because sometimes it looks a lot worse than what it really is. Let me try to get a good focus. There we go. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to scrape some of this up. Okay. It's probably not too bad. It looks like the majority of the damage is on this pin here. Okay, we do have some vias there that come loose. Okay, so is this a ground or is this a power? I don't know these units very well just from memory so I'm not sure what that is but we can look real quick if we flip this over I can't see I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean it up best I can then I'm gonna try to get it out okay so we can see these traces here are a little bit damaged 
Uh, you know, I want to actually... I want to actually probably cut this away just so I can clean the whole area good. Uh, I don't want to damage these because those little ones are a pain to try to put back. But let me cut the... Because this is easy to put back, this big piece here. Okay, and this piece was connected to this this guy right here. Okay. And, you know, when these boards get like this, the, the, a big problem is that the, the burn, the charcoal kind of uh, has a little bit of resistance to it. So, I don't even know if this is worth trying to repair since they have, they have a replacement already. I think I'm just going to try to take a backup. I was trying to see if there's any internal layers. I, I don't know these units that good, like I said. So, yeah, here's an internal layer. So this is a multi-layer board. And like I was saying, the problem with the FR4 being so burnt like this is that it can cause resistance between these internal layers. Let me kind of move that guy out the way. I just don't know how bad it is. And, you know, this little guy just getting in my way, I feel like I should just move him out, cut him, and, you know, redo it. But I really would hate to do that if I don't have to. So this internal layer is kind of damaged too. I don't know what it is. It's probably another ground. Probably attached to this. Yeah, and you see how the through hole come and connect it with it. And you know, this is this is just kind of a fool's errand. You see, here's a trace coming through here. There's a trace here, and these aren't connected. These are all different, different things. So, so yeah. At this point, I think I'm just gonna try to clone this one and transfer it over. That's unfortunate that something so simple uh, can cause so much damage like that. A few moments later. So I have already read the original I had to turn my big exhaust fan on because the smell was just too bad so um, I didn't get that on camera but I have the donor here open and we are going to connect through BDM with it and we are going to upload the programming from the original uh, aka clone the original to this donor unit here um, so you're welcome to follow along with me as I do that so we're going to use our KEST-3 device here. We have our T104 ribbon cable, and we also have uh, whatever this cable is called. That's what we have to connect to some pins here. Okay, so let's take a look at the instructions. Uh, let's see, we're just going to pick E-class, any of the E-class here. I think this is the one I picked last time. We're going to connect in boot mode. Okay, we'll take a look at the manual. And you can use a BDM positioning frame on this if you want. I, I don't like them, so I'm just going to connect the wires here. And this is our unit here, this exact one. Almost a little bit different. We don't have this capacitor here. But we do have the BDM pad layout just like that. All right, so these are our points that we're going to connect to. Now, if you notice, it's different than 
how this one is laid out. So we do have to kind of rotate it. And these are our pin connections here. So we got one, two, three, four, and five is power. So let's go ahead and connect that right here. I know this is supposed to be red, but I'm going to use the yellow one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And this is the middle size pin. It able to get two pins in one connector there. I'm going to hook up this ground pin. Okay, now we're going to do the BDM here. And we'll put some flux and going to get some solder here just to pre kind of pre tin everything. Okay, have you have a little have a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna drag some of that away. Alright, so there we can see our pad, and like I said, we need to rotate it from the instructions. So here you see let's uh, start with the gray one. You see this? We'll we'll consider this pin one, this gray one. So when we come back to this, our gray one actually is here. So this will be our pin one. So I'm going to hook up our gray first. Okay, just like this. Then we're going to hook up our purple. And again, this is the T104 cable. And then we're going to skip a pad, and then we're going to hook up green. So we skip this one, and then we hook up this green here. Uh-oh. Right there. Then on the next side, we skip one, and then we hook up brown. And then we skip one, and then connect blue. Okay, make sure none of these guys are touching. Like that. Okay, then we can come back to our CAS software. We can hit identify. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn on power. So, let me do that real quick. All right, now I have power going to the ECU. I had forgot to turn on my supply. So let's try this again. We're going to try to identify again. And that's a good sign. It says retrieving ID information. That's good. Okay, so we did get it identified correctly. And then uh, it's got our information here. Now, I don't really need to back this one up. I'm just going to actually write our backup from the one I read earlier, which was, it was this one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that file. And now all we have to do is be patient. So that took a little bit of time. Um, it is all done now. And the only thing left to do is to remove our connections here. Just like that. Make sure nothing's bridged. Remove our power and ground there. And then we're just going to seal it back up. 
Now this one I didn't take the bottom board out, so that part is still sealed. And I'm just going to do a little thin, thin layer across here like this. Screw this guy back down. All right, there we go. That job is all done. So now this one is a one-for-one -one copy of the original, uh, you know, minus the uh, hardware damage there.